So we're talking about how to tell the difference between bluebird nests and house sparrow nests. We'll talk about why this information is so important, how to actually tell the difference, and what to do when it's really hard to tell because a lot of times it can be really hard to tell. By the end of this video, you should have a lot more confidence to where if you opened up a nest box, you should know exactly what you have. And if you don't, you'll also know what to do in that situation. So let's dive into it. And the first thing we need to talk about is why this is so important. And especially if you're new to this channel or new to bluebirding, you definitely want to listen to this part. So I want to talk quickly about this, but house sparrows are an invasive non-native species in North America. And that keyword is invasive. Invasive species outcompete native species, they overpopulate, and they also cause ecological harm, which is like a big part of that definition. In the case of bluebirds, tree swallows, purple martins, chickadees, and other cavity nesting birds, it's even worse because house sparrows aren't just like out competing for resources, they're actually killing these birds. And it's not nestlings, it's not just eggs, they're killing adult birds. And this is something that does cause a lot of ecological problems because you're, you're now destroying a reproductive viable bird when you kill the adult bird. So it's very important that you know the difference so that way you can take a part in population control and discourage them from nesting in your yard or protect your bluebirds stuff like that. So now we get to go into the good stuff and that's how to differentiate house sparrow nests and bluebird nests in the first place. So the first indicator to look at is nest height and I need to back up really quick and talk about what I mean by that. So house sparrows and bluebirds among some other birds in North America are cavity nesting birds and what this means is they're the type of birds that nest in tree holes or nest boxes. I don't want to say bird houses because decorative bird houses are kind of a no-no for cavity nesting birds, but they nest in tree holes and bird house or nest boxes. And so when I talk about nest height, that's what I'm talking about is in relation to the nest box. So when you open up a nest box and you're looking in and you're trying to tell the difference between house sparrow or bluebird nest, uh, one of the big indicators is if you have a bluebird, the nest height is going to be just below the entry hole. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, just below the entry hole. You will have some outliers. You're going to have some really shallow nests and you're going to have some really high nests where it's kind of hitting right at the, the entry hole. But for the most part, it's going to be just below or an inch below and that's where it stops. House sparrows, on the other hand, will fill the box almost full or all the way full. So you may see like an inch gap, half inch gap between the roof and the nesting material. That's one big indicator of a house sparrow right there. But like I mentioned, there are outliers, there are variables, and so one tell is not sometimes not enough. So the next one would be nest shape. Bluebird nests are going to have these nice cups. So if you were to open the nest box and look inside, what you're going to see is a nice nest cup. Whereas house sparrows do what we call tunneling and they tunnel their nests from the entry hole down into, I'll, I'll just call it the nesting chamber. I, I guess there's kind of a cup down there that cradles the eggs, but, but we'll just call it a chamber because that's kind of what they built inside the box. So the, they get into the entry hole and they just tunnel down in there and that's where the eggs are going to be. That's a big sign there. So if you open up the nest box, it's filled to the brim and what you have is like a whole in the nesting material. It's basically a, like a vertical hole situation rather than that nice cup. That's very likely a house sparrow. Definitely not a bluebird, that's for sure. The last really big indicator is material. Bluebirds are very uniform in how they construct their nest. It's usually pine or straw or grass or a combination of pine, straw, and grass but it will be pretty consistent. Every now and then you get an artistic bluebird who decorates with a feather or some bits of fiber, things like that, but it's going to be very minimal. House sparrows, on the other hand, go crazy. They nest with whatever they can find. So they find grass and straw, but they'll start to add things like leaves and feathers and whatever other knickknacks they can find. Something that's also been very well associated with house sparrows is trash, plastic bits and garbage in their nest. So those are some of your big signs. And if you see these in combination, you definitely have either a house sparrow or a bluebird. It's a very easy way to confirm, but 
there are situations where it's really hard to tell. And that's where I think a lot of us run into problems. Times where it's hard to tell the difference is when the nest is still under construction, when the nest that's being built is on top of another nest, or when you have a either a messy bluebird or a very neat house sparrow. And then the last one is when you don't have either a house sparrow or a bluebird. So let's kind of get into that because it's really important that when you're facing that situation, you know how to handle it. So that first situation when it's hard to tell is when the nest is under construction. And in the beginning, things can look a little messy and they can also look fairly uniform in terms of material. You may see a nest box and it's it's starting to be filled with the grass or something like that and it's a little bit disheveled there's not a defined cup um, actually house barrels will kind of start with a little bit of a cup when they're starting to build so what do you do in this situation if you ask anyone what they're going to say is watch the nest and look at who's bringing material to the nest so it's going to take some time but really spend an hour it may even take less than an hour especially if you time it kind of early in the morning or sometimes in the evenings when they're actively building and just watch and look at who's bringing if you see a little grayish bluebird bringing material to the nest box then you've definitely got yourself a bluebird if you see a little brown bird uh, that chirps and tweets a lot and she's got a white little eye stripe and a solid breast you've got yourself a house sparrow so that's that's the best way to tell in that situation it doesn't take too long but it does take some patience the next scenario of when it's hard to tell is when the nest that's being built is on top of another nest and when you're starting out this could be really hard because what you're looking at is almost an inconsistent messy looking nest but if you look very closely what you want to look for is layering and that's the indicator that you've got a nest on top of another nest so let's say you open a nest box and you see a base of sticks followed by a base of straw that's the layering that i'm talking about or maybe it's a base of moss followed by straw or pine needles that's a nest on top of another nest. So it's kind of consistent here, and then it's consistent here. Um, what to do in this situation? So first confirm, you know, this is a nest on top of a nest. And then if it's a full nest, you kind of want to look back at your earlier indicators. Is, it, is there a nest cup? Is it filled to the brim or does it stop right under the nest hole? Is it tunneling? Is it not? Those are your indicators. If the nest is still under construction or you're just not sure, then you fall back on the watch and see who's bringing material to the nest, and then you know. The next situation is when you have a messy bluebird or a very neat house sparrow. So in this situation, you've got a bluebird and she's she's filled her box like crazy, or it's a little disheveled, or she's, I call them artistic, but they're not, they're birds. <laughs> they're not humans, but she's put some feathers here and there. Um, this, in this situation, you still want to fall back on your indicators. There's no tunneling. Overall, it's made of straw. There's a neat nest cup. You've got yourself a bluebird. On the other side of all of that, in the situation of a neat house sparrow, what I kind of mean there is that the material is very uniform. It's all straw. There's no trash, no feathers, no, no nothing, no leaves. It's all consistent material. But what you are seeing is that tunneling then very likely you have a house sparrow, but I would still recommend, until you have more experience, I would still recommend you watch uh, and see who's actually building because it could be another bird. And that brings us into our last scenario is when you don't have a house sparrow and you don't have a blue bird, you have something else. So birds are very consistent in how they build their nest, or I should say bird species, and how they build their nest and the materials that they use. Chickadees and titmice build with a, a mossy base and they layer in some fur and there'll be little strips of bark interspersed, but it's very consistent from one chickadee to the next or one titmouse to the next, that's what you're gonna see. House wrens build with sticks. So if you see your box filled with twigs and sticks and it's kind of, they'll fill to the brim. So that's where it gets confusing. So they'll fill the box up. And, uh, but the, the key here is that the material is sticks. The one bird that I would say can make it really hard is Carolina wrens. They are not typically your classic cavity nesting birds. They are just, uh, they kind of do their own thing when it comes to nesting. They'll nest anywhere. They'll nest in garages, they'll nest in flower pots, they'll nest in trucks, in hoods of hoodies, in grills, just 
anywhere, but on occasion they'll find a nest box and decide that's where they want to build a nest. And the thing about Carolina wrens is they do a little bit of that tunneling too. So if you find a nest in a flower pot, what you'll see is um, kind of like a dome with an entry hole and that's how they built their nest. So if you were to look inside an, a nest box, what you might see is that tunneling too. The thing about the material that Carolina wrens use is it's typically a lot more leaves mixed with straw and, and stuff, but it can be hard. And so this is why I say if you're not very sure with what you have, the best thing to do is just wait, watch, and see who's bringing material to the nest. As you get more experience, you may just kind of rely on your ears. So if you hear a house sparrow, and you know the sound of the house sparrow, so you hear a house sparrow singing on the box or singing very close to the box, then yeah, I mean, fill to the brim, uh, odd, odd material, tunneling, and it's singing, um, and you know the sound, then yeah, you definitely have a house sparrow. And, and on the other side of that, if, if it's a somewhat filled box there's some tunneling but what you're hearing is a carolina wren or if you get near the box and you hear an agitated carolina wren that's likely what you have but really um, again the, the best way to to do it is just to watch the nest the final thing i want to say about all of this is the legality of this you know is it legal to remove a house sparrow nest and the answer is yes for the most part so house sparrows are not federally protected and therefore their nests, their eggs, their feathers, their nestlings, and they themselves are not protected and you can remove that nest. The thing is you do need to check with your state and local ordinances because some states, I don't think many states protect them. I don't think any state protects them, but they may have rules on how you're supposed to dispose of the nest or how you need to report them or what you're doing with the eggs. So that is something to consider and, and it's really easy to get on your state's conservation department uh, website and take a look there or just email the conservation department and, and ask if, if you want. Um, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world if you had removed a house sparrow nest without reporting it or without checking the guidelines, but you know, if you wanna stay within the law, which we recommend, um, it's very easy to figure out what those rules are. So now you should have some clarity or at least a game plan for when you're approaching this situation. And if you ever don't, if you're ever not sure, or you're having trouble, just email, visit the website and email, send pictures, or you can go on different internet groups and send pictures there and people will be so quick in responding and giving you a clear answer. I hope this video was helpful and thank you so much.